Hey everybody! So today we are going to make a Cassie Stevens, who is that lovely art teacher who I posted about in our announcement last night. Um, she created these awesome um, robot collagraphs, and a collagraph is a uh, relief sculpture. So that means that it's not completely flat since this is made out of cardboard. If you touch it, you'll notice that you've created a bumpy texture. Um, and with this relief sculpture, you'll notice that it looks kind of funky. My daughter colored a bunch of our robot pink when we made it last night. This isn't the finished, the finished item, though he looks awesome. Um, when you make a collagraph, you put another piece of paper on top like this, and then we're going to take the side of a crayon and we're going to rub, and all of the texture and relief that you have created is going to show up as a print on here. So um, normally a collagraph, you would roll ink a true collagraph, you would roll ink on top of your relief sculpture, and then you would lay a piece of paper on top and press, and then the ink would transfer to the back. But we're going to do a way less messy option, and we're just going to do a crayon rubbing over the top. So all you're going to need is stuff I am pretty sure most people have. Um, I have a Dunkin' Donuts box. If you know Mrs. Savory at all, you know that I'm obsessed with donuts. Um... So you're gonna need like a nice big surface and this is where we're going to build our um, our little robot man. So I'm gonna use this piece right here. And then I've got some extra, you wanna make another robot? All right, come on over. To build our robot, we're gonna need a bunch of little pieces. We're gonna need lots of geometric pieces. We need to make a bunch of geometric shapes to build our robot. Geometric shapes are the shapes that you learn in school. These are shapes that are nice and even. Oftentimes, Mrs. Savory says that they are perfect. Um, now, does that mean you have to cut perfect shapes? Certainly not. But we're going to try to make them as even as we can. So you see lots of rectangles, squares, skinny rectangles, circles, half circles. Um, we even did a crescent shape for the mouth. So, Miss Piper, do you want to help me build a robot? I want to get the, the average robot like this. You want to make another robot? Okay. Like this. Okay. So, we are going to make some rectangles. And I'm going to speed up the video. So, if you guys need to stop and pause while you guys are making your geometric shapes, that is totally fine. I'm going to make some large pieces, some medium pieces, and some small pieces. Here we go. So when you go to cut a any kind of anything, your scissors should always stay pointing away from you and they stay still. And this lazy hand over here who normally they're like, oh, I'm just gonna stay over here and not do anything. I'm just gonna hold this paper still. This is actually the hand that needs to be doing all of the work. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out some circles and when I do this, notice my scissors stay pointing away from me and I'm going to turn the cardboard as I cut. And this is going to make a much neater circle than if you try to turn your scissors. So I've got one circle. I've got another circle. So remember, you want big shapes, you want medium shapes, and you want some small shapes. Grown-ups who are doing this with younger kiddos, especially in preschool or kindergarten, um, get let them use their scissors. Obviously, supervise them. My daughter is four; Before she's not in preschool yet, do um, so she else, hasn't gotten a lot of exercise with scissors. Um, but it is really important, especially large. for younger kids. These scissor skills are creating hand strength in, in your kiddos. Shapes. So anything that um, makes your kids pinch it. or squeeze, Piper's that's really, really important really to build and hand strength. It improves handwriting. It improves fine motor skills. Before I move on, I'm going to lay out. Cut it themselves. So I'm going to put these big ones here. And I think, Piper, what do you think about putting wheels at the bottom of our robot instead of legs? <laughs> Does that sound funny? Yeah. So maybe we'll do a really big head, a really big body. And then let's see, where are our circles here? 
We could do one circle like this. Wait, or got the legs. Well, instead of legs, we're going to do wheels. What do you think about that? <laughs> I think it's funny. Yeah. So I think I want to trim this guy down. Wait, wait I have glue it. Not yet. We got to lay it all out first. Oh. So I'm going to trim this guy down so that he's a little bit more the same size. Please. That looks better. Does that look Can better, I, Piper? I'll glue these. We're not going to glue just yet because we have to lay out all the pieces and make sure they fit. Ah. Yeah. So now that we know that the basic parts of our robot are all the way fitting on our big um, bottom piece here, then mm. we can start gluing. Piper, do you want to teach the kids how to glue using the white glue Wait, bottle? I got it. Let me open it for you. Okay. So Piper yesterday was really awesome at mm. using a glue bottle. She's going to show you how to use just enough. So she's only putting just a little tiny bit of glue. Uh-oh. You know, we might need a little bit up here. Yeah. So I normally just do dots of white glue. And if you don't have white glue, glue sticks work just as well. <laughs> and then we're going to flip it over. Yep. And I want to glue all of this too. Yeah, you can go ahead and glue all of that down. I want okay? to glue the arms first. And Piper is four. So if my four-year-old can do this, you guys can do this. Even though you fourth graders like to give me a run for my money when I give you white glue. I want to get glue over here now. Yeah. Oop. Oop. Oh, goodness. Sorry, kids. <laughs> <It's... laughs> All right. Okay. Now you got to put glue on here. Okay. Glue. Oh. You put some over here. Yep. Blop, blop, blop. I do some just yeah. boop boop. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. And flip over. Oh, your wheels. The wheels so funny. And okay. I want glue. Put some glue there. So. Let me flip one. Mm -hmm. Yay. I love flip ones. All right, so now that we've got our basic shapes glued down. Uh, uh, oh, well, we'll get the markers. We don't need to get the markers for right now. We'll what? do that later. You guys can color this later, but I want to show you the rest of it. So um, now we need to make a face for our robot, right? So let's get, let's see. Uh, these all these are the fall out. Huh? We need the glue ones. Yeah, we're going to glue them down, but we're going to make our face first. So the fun part about this is there is a million different details you could put on here. So you've got to think about like what you want the buttons on your robot to be. Maybe you can think about what those buttons are going to do. So we're going to go ahead and speed up the video and put the rest of our details Please, on here. You just don't. This is mine. This is mine. Oh, good job, I think. That was a really good idea, Piper. Yeah. I glue for you. All right, I think it's all glued down. We did it. But, but, but. All right, so the next part is completely optional. If you have, this will work if you have white glue or if you have um, glitter glue, that would work too. Um, and this last part is going to end up drying clear, but. If you want to add just some little extra details on here, um, then you can draw lines with your white glue. So I think I'm going to put some extra lines over here. And do you see how nice and thin those lines are? Try to keep them nice and thin. You don't want giant blobs of glue because they will not look good. And we want to try to keep everything geometric, which means nice and even, not organic, big and blobby. Okay. So I think I'm going to add maybe some buttons to these like panels here. This will need to sit for about two hours before we do the next part. If you added this glue on top, if you don't add the glue on top, you're going to want to wait about 10 minutes before we do the paper on top. 
All right, friends, so this is what my robot right now looks like, but I wanted to show you how to do the collagraph part um, while my husband is home and not at work so that my kids aren't screaming at me while I'm trying to show this to you. Um, so this is the one that Piper and I did yesterday. The next part, all you need is a piece of paper and a crayon with the, the paper torn off. We're gonna be using it on its side. So we're gonna take our paper, doesn't matter what kind, and you're gonna lay it on top of here. I was doing this with Piper yesterday and realized it was kind of helpful if you put a piece of tape at the top. I'm gonna put a piece of tape here and a piece of tape here. If you don't have tape, you can totally do this. It was just with little four-year-old hands helping me do this, it helped the paper stay down. So now I'm gonna take my crayon. You can use whatever color you want. I'm just using a black. And you're gonna lay your crayon down to sleep and you're gonna pinch his sides to make sure he's not rolling around. And then you're going to rub your crayon across the paper. And look how cool that is. Look at his face. And um, you could use like a bunch of different colors on your robot. You could do whatever you want on your robot. So like, instead of doing black, I could have done him to be like rainbow colors. And the best part about this is you can do this as many times as you want. If you write a story on your paper next to your robot, um, then I will have Mrs. Nicola, with your grown-up's permission, post it on our school Facebook account. So get your parents' permission. They can send it to me on Seesaw. And if you write a story about your robot or like all of the things that your robot does, then I'll share it on our school's Facebook page. So um, I'm going to write a story about my robot and then I'll share it with you guys later. So write a story, share it with me on Seesaw, and I will make sure that it gets over to Miss Nicola to share on the Orchard View Facebook page. Have a great day, guys.